So Sean Carroll, the physicist, was on the Mind Chat podcast, uh, hosted by Frank, uh, Keith Frankish, and Philip Goff, philosophers. Um, and it's frustrating in all the right ways, um, which is to say that they're. Um, I find the exchange they've had, and I've only only listened to fifty minutes, and I'm butting in now. Um, I find it so provocative um, what they're discussing and um, frustrating only because I wanted to interrupt and get a word in so that's what I'm doing uh, here and what they're talking about in these first 50 minutes of a three and a half hour podcast is the conceivability of the zombie argument um, the philosophical zombie who or which I should say uh, is physically identical to human beings and behaves and talks even uh, just like a normal human being would, but in fact is just a bunch of physical goings-on without anybody home. There's no uh, psychological perspective, uh, no uh, phenomenological horizon. It's just a zombie. And, you know, Goff laid this out and uh, used it to try to leverage the the argument that physicalism leaves something out. Um, and then Sean Carroll replied by saying, well, this argument, if it is conceivable, only gives us a kind of epiphenomenal consciousness that doesn't do anything, that doesn't alter the behavior of the organisms which host it or who are haunted by it, um, doesn't alter their behavior at all. It just sort of, it's like the the whistle on a steam engine, as T.H. Huxley put it. Uh, as far as Carol's concerned, if that's all consciousness is, then he doesn't want to bother with it anymore. It's useless. And so, you know, I, Carol's right, of course, but Goff's trying to point out that, um, well, he Goff seems to want to say that consciousness has some agency, so we're not just talking about, you know, the existence of phenomenal consciousness, uh, an existence of of a kind that physics somehow doesn't reach and cannot capture. Um, Goff's just trying to say that that um, requires something extra in our accounts of what is real, um, right? Not captured by physics. But he also, he, he wants to say that there's some sort of agency that consciousness does do something and he's saying what it does at the fundamental level is realize the mathematics of the physical descriptions of the world that that science has produced and then you know carol challenges the idea that somehow you know the max tegmark style ontology where the universe is made of mathematics is kind of pythagorean mysticism Carol says this isn't like widespread in physics and so you know for Carol it's the physical that's real and the math is a description of the physical now so I, I stopped the podcast at this point because I really wanted to ask Sean Carroll what he means by physical you know as a mathematical physicist because all the old sort of Newtonian properties of material bodies uh have totally evaporated um in quantum and relativistic physics as far as i can understand them conceptually now i don't pretend to understand the mathematics and so um you know i need sean carroll to help educate me on this but i would ask what he means by physical if not uh the mathematical relations described in you know the equations of special and general relativity and the wave function and what else is physical if not that and if we're going to accept the well of course it's that then not you know we're, we're talking about something that is um not simply located we're not talking about particles that exist in absolute space and time right we're talking about events which occur in some kind of a causal sequence at a finite rate a finite velocity right, in this uh, network of quantum fields. And so uh, Carol likes to talk about particles and, he, you know, he's a, he's a physicalist, but if it's not, 
if he's not going to say that the physical is whatever the mathematical relations are describing, then what is it? And I think what Goff is trying to say here is, well, what it is, is mind, is consciousness uh, of some fundamental sort that's different from our own human kind of consciousness, but that in one way or another, our human kind of consciousness is a uh, an evolutionary product of this more primary conscious um, what uh, plenum or underlying substance uh, substratum and so I mean at this point I'm not sure how Goff's panpsychism differs from a kind of cosmopsychism like Spinozist monism or something um, we'd have to get more into that but okay so what would my answer be to this question I'm asking Sean Carroll? Um, right, which was, what is the physical? Um, I would say that to understand what we mean by physical in the conceptual sense, not making reference to the mathematics, not that they aren't relevant and important, but, you know, Carroll himself is saying there's something more to the physical than just that. Um, I would say that, you know, Goff's on the right track. It's something like consciousness, but what is consciousness? Um, I would rather you know, drawn Whitehead's philosophy to talk about these processes of prehensive unification uh, of um, energy events, vibratory uh, energetic transmission. And to understand that this, this, trans this, this transmission occurs in a quantum way, right? It's not continuous. There are somehow units and so you know it would make sense to talk about particles but only uh always with a hyphen <laughs> that connects them to their field and always with a hyphen you know when you talk about an organism a hyphen that connects it to its environment because there is no separation in in reality um in our models we might make these um separations where a part is really you know separate from the other parts but in reality we're always dealing with particles in fields. We're, we're dealing with organisms in environments and always changing, evolving fields and environments. The universe is never the same twice. Our consciousness is never the same twice. The history of the universe is a cumulative process, right? It is um, iterative. There is repetition. But it's cumulative in the sense that each new event adds something, a new prehensive unification is achieved, which adds something to the universe. And so the universe grows dropwise by these little achievements of um, existence. And these achievements of existence are, yeah, they're conscious. There's, a, there's something it is like to be them, and when I'm referring to them, I mean at the widest level that we can empirically observe, you know, what as cosmologists, we can make reference to the cosmic microwave background radiation, right? Whitehead would refer to this as the electromagnetic society, which is the widest, um, most broadly arrayed form of social order that we as Earthlings are embedded within in this universe, and we can you know, learn things about the early history, and at least in the inflationary model, we refer to it as the early history of the universe, by looking at this background, the patterns in this background radiation. And so, that electromagnetic society is uh, a form of very, you know, low-grade, simple uh, order that's achieved by the relationships that you know electrons and other fundamental particles have entered into and then you know all the other forces uh, gravity and the strong and weak forces and whatever else we find that you know I'm Carol's pretty confident that the standard model of particle physics is finished uh, but there seem to be some fuzzy areas and places where the observations are not really aligning with the model and so I'm not sure it's complete and I think in this process philosophical um, sort of 
ontology I was just talking about, where the, the universe is new in each moment, uh, the idea of causal closure in a universe which is new in each moment doesn't make any sense anymore. It doesn't mean that the laws of thermodynamics can be thrown out or anything. It just means, well, ultimately it means we need to distinguish between the model and the reality and never mistake the causal closure of a mathematical model for the reality which is new in each moment, which includes a historically situated observer. You know, the model is brilliant, beautiful. It may be complete in, in itself as a closed system of thought, but reality will always outrun it. Right? The universe is, a, is an energy event and it's not done. <laughs> It's not done doing what it's doing. And so to think of it as a deterministic system, I think, is to become lost in the mirage of a final knowledge that doesn't really exist. And so whenever we're talking about consciousness in connection with cosmology, physical cosmology, what we're really talking about, I think, you know, first and foremost is like, the epistemological um, situation that we find ourselves in, right? Intelligent, conscious animals trying to explain their own existence. If we want to close that loop, our theory of everything is going to need to include more than just what we observe outside of ourselves in terms of what can be measured by clocks and rulers and, and then calculated and mathematically extrapolated. Um, if we can come up with all kinds of wonderful models, highly predictive models of that artificially separated off, you know, factor of our full experience of reality and call it nature and say these equations explain it with no remainder. <laughs> but who invented those equations? Who understands those equations? Who is the scientist who is engaged in this endeavor to understand their own origins, right? The, the living body and the conscious mind, which is embodied, needs to be factored in to the total situation that we are trying to explain, right? And so consciousness science needs to be a kind of self-referential, anthropic, rather loopy science, um, mystical paradoxical and you know the complexity sciences gesture in this direction at least but I think um, without you know revising some of our ontological presuppositions and shifting to something like you know Whitehead's process relational view um, or a Persian you know like Charles Saunders Peirce's view of a kind of um, semiotic universe you know, where instead of talking about information processing, we talk about semiosis, sign transmission and, and interpretation. Uh, so I should say sign expression and interpretation and, you know, see the universe as a sort of communicative um, process, you know, from top to bottom. So anyways, I'm going to keep listening and see what else I learned from uh, this awesome podcast.